the second part of an election special as I interview Democratic candidate for Congress John Delaney. In the first part of the show, Delaney said that despite his success and monetary gain, he is in tune with the public and the needs of the state. He admitted that his pro-choice views were not in line with the likes of Todd Akin and hoped that he can be the one to improve the ethics of I don't politicians. Think we have to settle for unemployment, harsh budget cuts, and a Congress paralyzed by a Republican right. We can do better. I'm not a professional politician. I have a track record of creating jobs right here in Maryland. Welcome to Headline News. Where do you think Bartlett has, has failed? What would you do better? Is perhaps a better question. Yeah, I, I th look, look at it. You know, I admire the congressman's commitment to public service, and he's been a dedicated and committed public servant for Ten a long terms, period of time. Right? Exactly. I think that I can be a more engaged representative. So I think a as a member of Congress, you have two responsibilities. The first is to represent your constituents to the best of your ability. And I think to do that, you have to do three things. You really have to combine federal resources, state resources, and community resources to tackle the problems and the issues that are important to your local constituents. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm in a very good position to do that because I've got a track record of working with people and getting things done. And I commit to the people of the district that I will, framing it that way, meaning taking federal, state, and community resources, bringing them together to solve problems, I think I'll be very effective at that job and I'll, I'll, I'll do a good job in that regard. But the second thing is working on some of these larger national issues. And I think my background as someone who's created jobs and understands small businesses mm -hmm. is exactly and precisely what the country needs right now mm -hmm. because we have a jobs crisis and we need people to solve that jobs crisis who've actually created jobs. And that's a huge problem in Hagerstown. I mean, the yeah. encouragement and not even encouraging new businesses, but keeping that's right. the smaller businesses here is right. a huge problem. It's all about competitiveness. And so one of the things I want to do is make this Maryland 6th Congressional District as competitive as possible for not only attracting businesses, but when those businesses start getting legs and really growing, making sure they stay here because that's as important. Because other people start seeing that and they want to take the businesses out of the district. Of course. Um, now, you work on your basis of the five E's. Yes. Uh, unemployment, energy, education, environment, pretty self-explanatory. The only one I was a little confused about was ethics. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say confused. I felt that uh, why would you devote so much time to try and improve the ethics mm -hmm. of politicians when you could put those energies right. into something that perhaps could be a little more successful? You know, because I think you know, the longer I live, the more I realize that incentives really matter. And we really need to make sure that our elected officials have the right incentives. Put another way, we have to make sure they don't have the wrong incentives, mm -hmm. right? And so I think the problem we have right now with our country is our elected public officials are incentivized for their own career interests. So they'll make decisions and when they decide what to do, they're thinking about their next election. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. The second thing they do is a relatively small amount of money from special interests influences their votes. That's a problem. What I want is more elected officials actually doing it through the lens of public service and actually sitting across the table and looking at what has to be done and working to get it done, which means you need a spirit of cooperation among your colleagues and you actually need a spirit of generosity towards the common good of the people. And so the ethics framing that we've laid out in our campaign is all about making sure the right incentives exist put another way, that the wrong incentives don't exist mm -hmm. so that members of Congress really act for the common good. I and I think that's as important as the specific policy initiatives. No, I agree with you, and I wish you the greatest luck with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, the reason, that's a big mountain to climb. That is a huge yes. mountain to climb. Um, but you have I would, to start. I would maybe prefer to take on unemployment and energy ahead of that, and I, you know, hats off to you. But they're kind of related in a way because... You know, we, we, we well, talk, they're the core of where things go wrong. Well, well because there's, there's so many big issues in this country that there's actually some common ground on that we should start making changes against. Like immigration policy is a great example. Mm -hmm. We need to completely reform our immigration system in our, my, in our country, uh, mm -hmm. to my mind, for several reasons. And there's certain parts of immigration reform that are really challenging. There's certain parts of it there's it's pretty broad agreement on. Mm -hmm. But the, the Congress is right now not capable of actually coming together on the things they even agree on because they're concerned about showing weakness in their more extreme positions that they may disagree on. Right. And that's a fundamental problem because some of these problems are big problems mm -hmm. and they need to be solved across the long term. We shouldn't think any of them will be fixed in one term. 
And it's hard to solve big problems with all or nothing approaches. You actually have to kind of look at the things you can do in the short term and do those. And then you have to look at the things you need to do across the long term and work strategically against achieving those. Right. That all involves some spirit of cooperation mm. where people on both sides of the aisle, even if they disagree about some fundamental things, need to come together on where they have common ground. Politicians agreeing, that would be nice. Yes. <laughs> the redistricting map, very yes. briefly, um, has caused, of course, huge, uh, huge controversy. Yes. Um, uh, it's suggested. And I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> we're, we're not blaming you personally yes, yes. yet. Yes. Uh, it, it suggested that it was, you know, to change to favor the, the Democrats. Um, what would you say to people who feel that way? I, what I would say is that for a long time I've been kind of uh, uh, proposing that we need redistricting reform both in Maryland and more importantly across the country. Mm -hmm. And I think we should strive as a country to take politics out of redistricting, right? And I think what's happened in California is actually pretty interesting. Uh, and there's other states that obviously have it as well where they have independent commissions and they all do it differently. But I'd be totally, totally, totally in favor of that. And I mm -hmm. think it's what we need because I think, uh, you, as you've identified, it's one of the root causes of, our, uh, of the mess we're in right now in Congress. What was the, uh, what was the purpose of redistricting? Well, re you know, redistricting is a normal process. The, the population changes in the country. And we're supposed to look at these population changes as they occur as part of our census process and realign districts to reflect population trends. Totally normal, right? And we have to be doing that. Otherwise, we're not, gonna have, to a a otherwise we're not gonna have a Otherwise, we're not gonna have a representative. That's right. Economy. Otherwise, we're not gonna have a representative democracy. But right. that doesn't mean it should be done for the benefit of the party in control, right? So, so what's happened is through a normal process of redistricting, which we have to do as a country, depending upon, uh, you see in many states, where a particular party controls it, they actually draw the map to their benefit. Quick question, you've got yes. about 30 seconds. What do you do for fun? Well, I just spend time with my kids. So I have four daughters. Uh, oldest is almost 20, youngest is five. And so, uh, and they all have different interests. And so uh, I would say I try to spend as much time as possible with them and of course with my uh, lovely wife uh, and support her in all the great things she's doing because she's got a very active career and is very involved in our community. So um, aside from that, I like to try to stay in shape as best I can and play sports and those kind of things. Great, thank you for your Thank time you, today. it's my pleasure, thanks.